If you've been to our tasting room in Las Vegas and you've done our experience, or if you've been to our tasting room in Glendale, California and done it, uh, you know what a treat you're in for tonight. There's only one major difference, and that is just like you, we are practicing social distancing. So I'm at my home in Las Vegas, our chocolatier is at his home in Las Vegas, and our chief tech maestro is at his home in Las Vegas. And the three of us are running this Zoom party room. So if something should um, you know, go awry, please just have a little bit of patience with us as the three of us work to figure this out. Couple of housekeeping notes here on the screen. You probably already read them, but I do just wanna cover those. We love questions and we love comments. We're just not in person to take those from you. But what we would ask is if you can use the Q&A functionality at the bottom of your screen and submit those, I will be working as fast as I can to answer any of those in real time or possibly wait till the end when Mark is finished and we can cover those live with him. Please note we will not be able to monitor the raise hand or chant, um, chat functionality just because there are so many just a few of us, we just can't handle uh, the pure volume of all that. Another point I want to bring up is we so wish we could see you, but we can't. We know you can see us and you can hear us, but we have turned off your audio and your video only because we want to ensure that this experience for everyone is as seamless and um, quiet and enjoyable as possible. So no dogs barking, no children crying, nothing like that. But we do know that many of you share on social media. And if you are doing that tonight, we would love for you to show us what you're doing and how you're having fun. Um, just by giving us a, an at Ethel M Chocolates mention or a hashtag Ethel M Chocolates. And then we'll be able to, to see that and aggregate all those photos out on social media. And then finally, if there's a piece you fall in love with tonight or a last minute gift for Mother's Day or Father's Day that you're thinking about, please be sure to visit us at ethelm.com and receive free shipping on your next order. So with all the housekeeping aside, I wanted to just go ahead and take you on a brief journey of who we are here at Ethel M and how we came to be. So we were founded in 1981 by Forrest Mars Sr. And you can see a portrait of Forrest in the upper left-hand corner. Upon retiring from the M&M Mars Candy Company that he had built with his father, Frank, Forrest was said to have wanted to move west for a better climate, which who can blame him? So he moved to the uh, outskirts of Las Vegas, which is technically Henderson, Nevada, and bought some land and opened up what is now our store and our factory. And, and back in the day, he even had an apartment on top of the factory because he was so passionate about bringing the chocolates to life that he and his mother Ethel had uh, created when he was a child in Tacoma, Washington. So you can see the photo in the center, that is our store today. And still many of the recipes that we make in our factory are those original recipes that Forrest and his mother made uh, back in Tacoma. The other really interesting thing that you all know if you've been here is that uh, Forrest was an avid gardener and we have proof of that. We are blessed to have a three acre cactus garden right outside of our doorsteps and it is just gorgeous. There's a picture in the upper right hand corner where you can see everything in bloom and it's pretty true to life here right now because it's springtime and everything is flowering. Uh, cactus only flower once a year and now is the time. So it's just, it's just a divine sight and we're so lucky to have it here. We always keep our cactus garden free and open to the public. So if you're ever out in the area and wanna stop by and see our over 300 species of native plants to the Southwest, please stop by. I will also tell you though, if you're out here at the holiday time in the lower left-hand corner is a photo of how we decorate for the holidays. So we're going on, I believe 27 years of doing this where we take over 1 million LED holiday lights and we decorate the garden and transform it into this magical winter wonderland. And as you can see here, those are a couple of yuccas and some palm trees and cacti that are all decked out for the holidays. And it's just, it's become a really special tradition, not only for locals, but for tourists alike. Um, a little bit of fun fact for you all is that this has become so popular. If you're familiar with the uh, show Tanked on the Animal Planet, they actually love our garden so much that they came out last winter and built us a custom aquarium for the garden and filmed their show here. So uh, like I said, it's becoming quite well known throughout and people are flocking to see it. 
And then the last point I want to bring up is sustainability. Uh, that that bottom middle picture, it is just a critical, key, important part for all of us here at Ethel M Chocolates. We believe that the world we want tomorrow starts with the business that we're building today. So we are proud to let you know that we have a four acre solar garden right outside of our door that obviously soaks up a lot of sun given how much sunlight we have out here and produces enough energy to power our factory during peak production hours. So you can also um, not only feel good about eating a chocolate that's delicious and recipes passed down from generations, but also a chocolate that's doing good for the environment. So with that, I'm the only thing standing between you and Mark and starting to taste your chocolates. A brief introduction, Mark Mackey will be your chocolatier for the night. He is um, our chief chocolatier. He also does a lot of product development work for us here. He comes to us with a degree from the Culinary Institute of America in New York. And most impressive, I think, is that he holds US and international patents for his work on improvements to the texture and profile of chocolates. Not a lot of people can say that. So sit back, relax, have fun, and enjoy your chocolates. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, everybody can see me all right. Um, I'd like to welcome you all back. Um, to our second chocolate tasting. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time, I'm really, really excited to be with you all tonight and taste some delicious chocolates, um, as well as actually talk a little bit about how they're processed and how we get the delicious chocolate um, that you see in front of you from this right here. All right? So um, all real chocolate starts out from a cocoa bean and a cocoa pod, just like I have here. Um, cocoa is a really unique fruit in that it only grows about 20 degrees north and south of the equator. Uh, our delicious Ethel M chocolates are made from a blend of very specialty cocoa beans, uh, which come from growing regions in Ecuador, Brazil, and West Africa. <clears throat> so actually, if you think about cocoa as being a fruit, you know, cocoa grows on trees, just like you see in the photo in front of you. And what's really unique about cocoa is that it grows not just on the branches of the trees, but actually on the trunk as well, which is really pretty cool. And, um, you know, the farmers, when they're growing cocoa, you really, every variety of cocoa can have a different appearance uh, when, it's, when it's ripe and ready to be harvested. So whereas this, this sample I have here is a beautiful hue of got some red, some green, some yellow in there, gorgeous. Um, a, a different varietal may exhibit different colors um, you know, when it's ripe and ready to be harvested. And when it's ready to be harvested, that has to all be done by hand using a very um, advanced method of technology called a machete. Um, and actually, a lot of the original, like the initial cocoa growing and harvesting, all of that is done by hand, which is really pretty incredible when you think about all the chocolate that's out there in the world. Now, when the cocoa is ready to be harvested, as I said, the farmer is going to cut that off of the tree with a machete. This is actually a real cocoa pod that I had flown in from Ecuador. And I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and cut this open for you guys all right now. All right, so you can see here, very thick skin um, on that on that pot, and then look at this. This is delicious. Let's pull these out of here. Right here, these are the delicious cocoa beans that you see right there. But if you think to yourself, these really don't look a lot like cocoa beans, right? Or they don't look a lot like chocolate, I guess I should say. And you know, they're covered by this. Here, I've got some in a bowl. They're covered by this kind of white pulp that covers each of the beans. And that serves a really, really important purpose. Um, you know, so really in cocoa processing, there are two major components to developing all of the beautiful and delicious flavors and nuances that we taste. The first is fermentation and the second is roasting. And this first process is fermentation. So it's gonna take about five days. And um, all of this, this pulp that's here, it's actually pretty sweet. Um, it's a little uh, sweet and acidic. It's got a flavor kind of like lychee and pineapple. And um, because of that sweetness, that's actually gonna help 
promote an environment for fermentation to occur. And that's going to develop a lot of the really fine flavors, fruity floral nuances and aromas um, that we'll have in our finished chocolate. So if you see here, this farmer um, on the third photo, they're actually, um, that those beans have been fermenting for a few days. You can see they've moved from changing um, or moved from this white color to kind of a brown color. They're kind of oxidizing a little bit, fermenting. Um, during that process, we'll see temperatures up to about 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit um, to develop those, those flavors, which is really, really important. And then after the fermentation is complete, we're going to dry everything out. We're going to use um, you know, the sun, the natural resource, to actually dry all those beans. We don't want to develop any mold or anything on, on the beans, so we want to dry all that surface moisture out. And then that's really you know, when we're going to be uh, acquiring the beans in our roasting facility in the United States. We will actually roast all of our cocoa beans to a very specific um, specification. So very similar to how coffee beans are roasted to different levels of roast. You have a light, medium, and dark roast. We're actually going to do the same thing with our cocoa. There's actually a lot of similarities to coffee roasting and cocoa roasting. Um, you can see here a photo kind of scooping in some of those beans. We're going to roast them. Um, you know, when we're making a darker chocolate, you know, a little more complex, we may roast those beans um, a little darker at a little higher temperature, a longer period of time to develop those flavors. Whereas if we're looking for something a little more mild, maybe a milk chocolate or a white chocolate, we're um, potentially going to roast those beans for, for less. Um, and that roasting process, as well as fermentation, helps to drive out some of the uh, more acidic notes that can be found in cocoa beans. So as I said, fermentation and roast, those are the two critical drivers of flavor in the finished chocolate. And uh, next, after we've roasted our beans, here I've got some, some roasted beans for you to see right there. They look kind of, not quite as dark as coffee beans, but sort of similar. You'll see here, there's a skin or a shell on the outside of that cocoa bean, right? So we don't actually want that. It doesn't serve any culinary purpose for us. So we're gonna, we're gonna take that off. And what's left here, this will actually break up really easily. This is called the cocoa nib. And here I've got a bowl of them here. This is essentially 100% unsweetened chocolate. Uh, I like to refer to them as like little chocolate sprinkles. You can add them like in a salad. You know, they can add a great textural component to a lot of savory dishes and a lot of things at home. Um, but we use them obviously to make chocolate. And you know, these beans or these nibs here are about 50% fat. And because of that, when you grind them, um, you're going to liquefy that fat and it's going to turn into a liquid. So we take these beans or these nibs here, we grind them, and we have what's called 100% unsweetened chocolate or chocolate liquor. So there's actually no alcohol in the recipe. It's an industry term that we use, but it's at this point that we will add in our other ingredients. So things like sugar, milk powder, vanilla, other flavors. You know, we want to get everything kind of mixed together and ground together so that everything comes, um, comes down in, in particle size and, you know, turns into that silky smooth mouthfeel that you appreciate when you, when you have delicious chocolate. So we have that all kind of grinding together. Um, you know, that can take um, several hours actually to get everything down to that silky smooth um, profile. And then after that, you know, we have to do something called temper the chocolate. So tempering is kind of a unique process. Um, the chocolate itself is, is, you know, has cocoa butter in there. That's the fat part of the chocolate. And the, cho the cocoa butter needs to be tempered in such a way that we're gonna heat it and cool it under a very specific temperature curve and for a very specific amount of time to develop very stable crystals in that chocolate so that when it sets up, it will have all of the beautiful characteristics that you associate with premium chocolate. See that beautiful gloss and sheen there? If the chocolate's not tempered, you'll actually have a little bit of haziness on top. You may have seen in the past, like if you've ever let 
some chocolate sit in your car and it got a little too hot, maybe melted and then re-solidified, you might notice that little haze on, on the top of the chocolate. That's actually cocoa butter that's kind of risen through um, because that's become detempered and that's actually what you're feeling and seeing on the outside of the chocolate. So we need to do a very, you know, be very, very um, careful and very strict with how we treat our chocolate to temper it very well so that it actually will have all of these beautiful characteristics. All right. And then after the chocolate's tempered, at this point, we can either enrobe, which is what you see in the photo here. We have some beautiful caramels and toffees going through our little chocolate waterfall there on a conveyor belt. We can also mold. We have um, some chocolate molds. Um, couple of the pieces that we're tasting tonight have been molded so we'll we'll talk about those but basically just like it sounds we're taking the chocolate in the center and depositing it into the mold letting it set up and then we're demolding and um, enjoying those chocolates all right